Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and you know what, as much as most video games love to set the groundwork for sequels, it's still relatively common for protagonists to bite the bullet when the going gets tough, often sacrificing themselves in a grand heroic moment for the greater good. But you know what, some video games can't even wait to get to that and actually start you off dead. Yeah, it's a bit of a wake-up call, isn't it? So let's take a look at them today, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games where you start off dead. Number 10. Grim Fandango Tim Schafer's existential adventure masterpiece Grim Fandango is wholly concerned with death, set as it is in the Land of the Dead and all. Our protagonist is the very deceased Manny, who is stuck working a literally dead-end job as a travel agent in the Department of Death. Grim Fandango is a unique entry on this list, given how little we ever learn about Manny pre-death, and we never learn what caused him to end up stuck in the Land of the Dead in the first place. Also, unlike most video games featuring dead protagonists, Manny is never resurrected or offered the ability to return to the land of the living. Instead, his happy ending is finally being able to travel to the ninth underworld with his true love, where their souls will be able to rest forever. Oh, isn't that sweet? Number 9. Altered Beast Cult classic Sega beat-em-up Altered Beast is most fondly remembered for the central mechanic whereby players can transform themselves into a number of mythical beasties such as wolves, dragons, and bears. It's utterly wafer-thin narrative, though? Well, that's much less so. Plus, we also get that classic quote, RISE FROM YOUR GRAVE. But those who actually pay attention to the opening moments of the game will know that they're literally dead and buried when this all kicks off, before Zeus himself resurrects the protagonists and sends them on a mission to rescue his daughter Athena from Neph, the ruler of the underworld. The fact that you're summoned from the eternal slumber by one of Zeus's magic lightning bolts and look remarkably healthy for a zombie is all undeniably hilarious, but in a game where you can transform into a werebear amongst other were creatures, it's really only the third or fourth most ridiculous thing about the whole experience. Number 8. Mass Effect 2 Though Mass Effect 2 players do technically get to play as an alive and kicking Commander Shepard for about 60 seconds in the game's prologue, immediately afterwards they're ejected into space as the Normandy explodes, quickly suffocating to death. It's a supremely shocking, even heartbreaking moment for fans eager to regain control of Shepard once again, though thankfully Bioware didn't simply kill Shepard off for the sheer jaw-dropping sake of it. Moments later, the scene shifts forward to two years later, where Shepard has been resurrected thanks to Cerberus is, 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 Lazarus Project, an experimental procedure which managed to reconstruct them largely intact. Bioware sure gave fans a scare there, and though the means of Shepard's revival are fundamentally pretty loony, it's a damn sight better than permadeath for mere shock value. Number 7. Medieval Early PlayStation classic Medieval places players in the role of Sir Daniel Fortescue, a supposedly legendary warrior who apparently died in battle defending the Kingdom of Galomir from the evil sorcerer Zarok. But in reality, Daniel was killed by the battle's first arrow fired, with the king instead opting to print the legend and lend Daniel a more flattering fate. Yet when Zarok returns 100 years later to raise an army of his undead, he also unintentionally revives Daniel as a skeletal shadow of his former self, missing both his lower jaw and one of his eyes which he lost in the battle. Dan's goal throughout the game isn't to remain alive, or rather undead as it were, or even somehow restore his rotted body, but simply defeat the sorcerer and genuinely earn the legacy that he's already been afforded. And so when the sorcerer is defeated at the end of the game, Dan is able to return to his eternal sleep. Well, at least until the sequel, where he's woken up 500 years later to deal with another supernatural threat. Not even the dead get to rest easy, apparently. Number 6. Dark Souls the Dark Souls franchise is, like every From Software game, absolutely synonymous with death. And while you're sure to be dealt many hundreds if not thousands of brutal deaths throughout your time with this game, it's worth remembering that the player's character, widely referred to as the Chosen Undead, is, well, actually undead at the start of the game. The Chosen Undead is stricken with an undead curse which forces its victims to resurrect every time they're killed, and eventually their minds are completely lost. When the game begins, the protagonist is locked within the Northern Undead Asylum, where those afflicted by the curse are lured in to wait until the end of the world. And though you soon enough make haste to leave the asylum, you're already dead before you've even gained control of the chosen undead for the first time. FromSoft gonna FromSoft. Number 5. Shadow of Memories 
Konami's criminally underappreciated mystery adventure game Shadow of Memories casts players as a man who's stabbed to death by an unseen assailant in literally the first minute of the game. However, you're then resurrected by the mysteriously supernatural entity known as the Homunculus, who offers to send you back in time to investigate your own death, even giving you a digipad device to leap between four different time zones. But while the game features no traditional combat mechanics whatsoever, that's far from the last time that you'll die throughout this adventure. As you're Attempts to deduce your own death will inevitably cause you to relive the death scene again and again, gaining new clues with each subsequent demise. Though dated mechanically, it is still one of the most creative titles in the PS2's early library and absolutely deserves the remaster treatment in the near future. Make it happen, Konami. You seriously need some goodwill at the moment. Number 4. Silent Hill the Silent Hill series boasts an intentionally slippery internal logic at the best of times, but those playing through the original game for the first time will likely struggle to achieve one of its happier endings, and I'm using the term happy quite liberally there. And you might quite possibly end up with the most infamously grimiest ending of all. After protagonist Harry Mason defeats the game's final boss, the worst ending cuts to an image of Harry unconscious and bleeding from the head in his crashed car, suggesting that the game's trippy events were actually entirely imagined by his dying brain after having an accident on the way to Silent Hill. Now, this ending thankfully can't actually be canon due to the events of Silent Hill 3, and frankly, it's just damn too depressing to consider. But for less experienced players taking on the game for the first time, it's a completely demoralizing gut punch on which to end things. Number 3. Blood Omen Legacy of Cain the first entry in the much-loved Legacy of Cain series hands players control of human nobleman protagonist Cain for all of about, oh, I don't know, 10 seconds before he's attacked by an army of assassins. And because all of the exits out of towns are blocked by carts, really, we, we can't climb over this, okay, fine, Cain is made short work of by his assailants. But things are just getting started, as immediately thereafter, Cain is resurrected by Mortanius the Necromancer. Mortanius has brought Cain back to life as a vampire in order to do his bidding, that being restored the Nine Pillars of Nosgoth, while also allowing Cain the opportunity to exact bloody revenge on his killers, which he does in short order. Despite his understandable initial misgivings, Cain ultimately chooses to embrace his vampirism, and with this decision, a hit action franchise was born. Number 2. Murdered, Soul Suspect 2014's Murdered Soul Suspect may not be a great game, but it sure does open with an enticing hook, as our police officer protagonist Ronan O'Connor gets thrown out of a window by a serial killer known as the Bell Killer. Upon attempting to get up, Ronan discovers that he's dying, and to add insult to mortal injury, he has to watch helplessly as the killer fires a few bullets into his body for good measure. Cheers, mate. The rest of the game sees the player trying to identify Ronan's killer so that we can wrap up his evidently unfinished business and graduate to the afterlife where his late wife Julia, who was also murdered by the way, is waiting for him. Again, not a great or even particularly good game sadly, despite the quite appealing concept of a detective story centered around unmasking your own killer, but still, you start off dead, so it fits the list. And number 1. Planescape Torment Planescape Torment is one of the greatest RPGs in Say It With Me Kids of all time, and is a seminal video game no matter the genre. If you haven't played it, the recently released Enhanced Edition is well worth sinking your teeth into. This game literally opens up with the protagonist, known as the Nameless One, already dead and being wheeled out of a morgue moments before you take control of him. The twist, though? Well, the Nameless One is afflicted by a curse of immortality which has spanned thousands of years, meaning that every time he dies, he is resurrected as a new incarnation of him. Himself. However, he doesn't have any memories of his prior interactions, and those versions generally have wildly different personalities. Oh, and an innocent person's life within the multiverse is used to fuel his resurrection every single time he dies. So yeah, you get immortality, but you also get to feel bad about it. Brilliant. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games where you start off dead. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be great to see you over there. Hope that you have a fantastic day, whatever you are getting up to, my friend. Remember to treat yourself with love and respect because you goddamn well deserve it, okay? Do not let anything or anyone tell you otherwise. You're a big ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.